Welcome back to the third video in this series, all about how to set your simple practice up in one weekend. This video is all about billing. And if there's one thing we wanna know how to do really well in our simple practices, it's how to do our billing. So I really encourage you to take this video one step at a time, pause it as you need, so that you can set up your billing right the first time. So just like the previous videos, we're gonna start in our simple practice account on our calendar page here. And the first thing I'm going to do is create an appointment in the past. It'd be great if you're in your trial account, if you follow along and actually click and create appointments on your calendar as well. So you can follow along with each step in this process. At the end of the last video, we did this, but I'm just gonna repeat it here. So this cursor in the calendar is the current time. Appointments in the future are blue, and then appointments in the past are green. If they've been canceled, I canceled this one. That makes it turn yellow. And so to demonstrate the billing process, I wanna create an appointment in the past. So I do that by clicking on the calendar, search for the client, clicking on their name. Now this is the session that I had with them. Then I'll click done. And I'm actually gonna show you two different ways to add payment. So I'm gonna add two appointments here. And so to start things off, let's show adding a payment from the client's profile page. We've seen this page before. You can get to it by clicking on the appointment and then clicking on their name. You can see that their name is blue. That means it's the link. You can also search for the client in this upper search bar and then click on their name there. Or the next item down on our menu on the left is the billing tab. And so this is a chronological list of all of the billing transactions that have happened in your practice. And so you can see here that it's showing that session that I just added yesterday with sample client. And so that's another way, if you want to be doing billing, to click that billing menu and then go through here. And that'll show you or the payments that are coming in and the sessions that need to be billed. So you can click on the name there. So what I've seen most people do is go to the search bar and click and search their client there. That brings you to the main profile page for that client. And you, as you can see, we're on the overview tab. And next to that is the billing tab. Just like if these were files in your file cabinet, these two tabs kind of separate your progress notes and other paperwork from the billing section. And then within this billing tab, it can display different ranges of dates. By default, it's just showing the last 30 days. But if you're looking for something that's older, you can say this year, um, you can update that filter. And then there's also a filter for the type of item it is, of different types of transactions that you could filter this by. And then to the right, there's this new button, which allows you to create a new invoice, statement, super bill, or insurance claim form. These are the two sessions that uh, I just created. And to the right, there is a client billing overview box, which basically shows you the client balance. That's what they've paid and what they've been invoiced. Um, unallocated, which are like credits, basically, if the client overpays, unpaid invoice, and then uninvoiced. So just to take a step back here, the Simple Practice platform uses invoices to track all of your client's payments and what they owe you, basically. So for any service that you need to bill the client, you'll need to create an invoice for that. And that's how the system knows how much the client owes you. It's also what you could send to your client to let them know that they owe you a payment. And then when they do pay, that invoice is marked paid. And so then you can send that client that invoice marked paid as a receipt if you want. One thing I love about how Simple Practice does this, and, and the way I think is the easiest to kind of understand this is, when you have a client who owes you money, Simple Practice generates an invoice, which is basically just a bill. This is notifying the client, hey, you owe my private practice money, right? So you can either send that to the client or it's also just in their account. So then when that invoice gets paid, Simple Practice will automatically generate one of two things, either a paid invoice, and it literally looks like just a receipt that says paid on it. And that's telling the client, like, here's your receipt, or you can send them a super bill which is basically a receipt of the service they received that they can then send to their insurance company. And that'll have things like their diagnosis code on it, your license number, and that's what they need for their insurance. So some clients will just want a monetary receipt for their records if they're not intending to send that information to their insurance company. And some clients will want a super bill. 
and you can send either of those using Simple Practice. Yes, that's a great summary. Thank you, Kelly. And um, we do have another video about how to send super bills. If you want to learn more about that, you can see under this new button, there is the option for super bill. That's where you'll be doing it. So for right now, I'm just going to show how to add a payment while you're here on the client's billing page. To add a payment, you need to have an invoice. So first we need to create an invoice. So next to the appointment that you want to pay, you can click manage and then create invoice and add payment. That brings up the add payment window. So this is where you can set up that payment and process the payment. So let's take a look at this. At the top here, we're gonna select the invoice. So right now it defaults to have the invoice selected. You can also deselect that invoice. And so that's telling us that it's gonna apply this payment to that invoice, whichever one is selected here. The balance of that invoice is $150. The amount that we're gonna pay is $150, but this is also where if you wanted to do a partial payment, you could type in a different number there. So that's just nice to know that there's an option to do partial payments. Below that, there's also the option to add credit. So if this client has overpaid, you can click this box to uh, use that credit against their, their invoice here. And then that all sums up to this payment amount down here in the bottom. That's how much the client is gonna pay and that's how much you're gonna process today. You can also edit this amount. So if the client wanted to overpay for some reason, I don't recommend this. I don't recommend this either, but sometimes, you know, there's always exceptions to every rule. Yep, so that is an option. You can do that there. I'm gonna just change it back. Then below that, uh, we have the payment method selector. So online card on file, that's your integrated credit card processing within Simple Practice, which We'll show how to set up in just a few moments, but that's what you'd select if they're paying by credit card. You can see it gives you a button to sign up for that right now if you want to. Then below that, there are cash, check, and external cards. The important difference here is that online card is actually processing that payment with a credit card processor, whereas cash, check, and external card is basically just recording this transaction for your records because you're taking cash or check outside of simple practice or if you use another payment processor like um, Square or PayPal or something like that, you could record that as an external card because you're not using the uh, integrated credit card processing. That just tells the system, hey, I did collect that payment for this and to just make a record of that on the invoice. So I'll just put that as cash and then up here on the right side, it shows you a summary of what we're doing. And then you click add payment to add that payment. We're back here on the billing tab and you can see for this session, there's an invoice below here. The, it's been marked paid. And if I click the invoice, that brings up the invoice and that has been marked paid. You can see here what information is available on this invoice. It shows that the amount paid was 150 and who the client is. And say, for instance, you wanted to email that to the client, there's the option up here in the upper right to email that, download it, or print it. And you can click the X in the upper left to exit out of this window. So now we just showed how to add a payment from that client profile page. What about on the calendar itself? Because actually you can do this even faster. Like if you're in the session, the session just wrapped up, you can click on the appointment in the calendar and then add your payment from here. Down at the bottom, it says create invoice and add payment. So this is super easy to do. Of course, you don't see as much of the other billing info on this page, but if you are doing time of session billing. I use this feature all the time. You know, I tend to do it right after the session. And you know, you get better and better at this too. This is one of those things that starts out really scary. So if you're in your first weekend trying to learn all this stuff, it can seem really complicated. But by the time you've used simple practice for a few weeks, like I know I actually do this from the app on my phone. Um, and it takes me two seconds after an appointment. You know, I usually will do it sitting in my car as I leave for the day. I'll just go through and do everyone's on my phone. So it does get easier. Another thing I like about using this flyout is that it's all in one button here. So you just click the appointment, scroll down, check that the fee is correct. And then down you can click create invoice and add payment. That creates the invoice in the background and then it's automatically selected here. We see the fee again, the payment amount, 
you just select, um, okay, I collected payment with an external card, and then click add payment. So that's super fast. Then you can see that this invoice is added to the, the session flyout as well. You can click that if you wanna look at it, but it's just that simple. So maybe pause the video now and take a few moments to play around with this yourself if you weren't following along, to create a session in the past, add a payment for it, look at the invoice, um, just kind of poke around and make sure that you start to get comfortable with it. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and did a little bit more exploring with the billing process, tried it out. And one thing I'm sure you're curious about is the online payments feature, the credit card processing feature that's integrated in Simple Practice. Right now we're gonna go through how to set that up. It's really quick. So it's actually the next item on our getting started checklist. So if you click the getting started checklist in the lower right corner, it says turn on online payments. Let's click that. That brings us over to the settings page where we can turn on online payments. Yeah, I've used the integrated credit card since at the beginning of using it. And you know, I know that you have the ability to use an external feature and I'm not trying to like be super salesy or anything like that, but I think it's just always easier to have everything integrated. That's why I like Simple Practice and I like Stripe, which is what's the integrated credit card processing. And I know even in my other business, apart from this, I use Stripe. Yeah, I mean, just the fact that you can use the credit card information form and send that to your client so that you don't even have to see their credit card number um, or touch their credit card. It makes an entirely touchless process. That's really nice. That allows the client to pay on the client portal like later. So um, they can log in and click pay now themselves. You're gonna put in some information here to help our billing and payments team verify that you're a real person and set your online payments account up. And so the first step of that is to receive a security code. So you wanna make sure that this is your cell phone. And if it's not your cell phone, then you're gonna change that in your My Profile page. So it kind of gives you some directions here. And then click text me. And so I just wanna give you a preview of what happens after that step. Basically, you are gonna put in your business details, whether you're LLC, et cetera. Yeah, the only thing I would always remind people is to make sure you select the correct business type. So when you use Stripe or any other credit card processor, this is something they look at. So when you click that business entity, you know, make sure to set this up after you know what type of business entity you are, whether you're a sole proprietor or an S Corp or something else, take the time to like pick the right answer on that. Then the statement descriptor is how you want your practice to show up on their credit card bill. So this is what they would see as the charge coming from. And then for the payments that are coming from this credit card processing, you're gonna put in your bank account details because that will be direct deposited uh, to your bank account on a certain schedule, which you can actually set um, later in this process. And then of course, add your details, add some identity verification. That's what our team checks. And agree to the terms and conditions and then click save. And so after you do that, it will give you some directions on what the next steps are. It might take a couple of days for our team to verify your account. And if you don't end up using it, there's no fee for having it set up. So I highly recommend signing up for it just so it's an option for you in the future if you need it. So we're here on the settings page, which you can get to by going to settings and then billing and services. We have tabs on the top here of settings. These are, these are just general settings, online payments, services, products, and then insurance. This is where you would add your insurance info if you accept insurance, like your NPI number, your taxonomy code, things like that. So let's go to the services tab first. As you recall, these are the services that we added when we first signed up for our Simple Practice account. This is where you can customize them further. You can use this button to add a new service. You can add the CPT code here and it will search our database, or you can just type in a number like phone. If you wanted to add a phone consult, this is the description. Then you have the rate, so I'll add $0 for that. And it's a 15 minute session. You can also make this your default service. And these are some options for online appointment requests. And then click save. If you don't use any of these services, you can click the name of the service and then click delete service. 
just to clean things up here if you want to. Also, you can change the default rate for this service. So that's the services tab. Now let's go to the settings tab up here at the top. And so these are some general settings for billing that apply to your whole practice. Here you can add your tax ID or social security number. And if you do add this, like say you add your social security number, after you add that, you can tell it whether you want to display this number on your super bills and invoices, just super bills or none of them. And so in certain cases, um, super bills are gonna require to have something like your tax ID on them. So that's why this option is here, but you can also select none. If you scroll down the service description, so this is in your invoices, what the service looks like. You can use just a general one like this, professional services, or you can click to use the actual service and description is in your account and that will be reflected on the invoice. So it's just up to you if you want that invoice to have something specific like that or a general name. Below that, you'll see that invoices are set to automatically be created each day. This is how we recommend setting it up. You can also set it to mark the invoices past due at a, after a certain number of days. You can tell it to email clients when an invoice is past due. You can have it automatically create statements for your clients. Uh, automatically create super bills for your clients, which Kelly was talking about earlier. I do that. I love this feature. So I have it set at super bill once a month. And so clients can log in and I tell them this, like I'll send it to you once a month, but you can also log in and get it. So if they haven't downloaded it from me, you know, they can log into their portal and get it. Below that, this um, billing document delivery delay, that's basically if you have these settings set up to send your clients invoices, after you create an invoice, it gives you kind of a buffer period after you create that invoice to edit it, and then it will send it to the client like after 90 minutes, for instance. So might as well just set that to the longest um, setting there. And then under here, billing documents for new clients. So for every new client that you create after this point, do you want them to get a statement and a super bill and or a super bill? You can click those on. And you can also set how they receive those documents. So is, do they not get an email at all? Or do they get an email with that document attached to it or with a link to the client portal? So the client portal option is the most secure option. So I usually pick that. And then you can select to have them be notified when each of these documents are created. Last but not least, auto pay. Now this is the option to automatically bill your client at the end of the day after their session if they have a credit card on file. So this is super handy that if you have a client that doesn't wanna think about paying and they're happy to just have their credit card on file with you and be automatically billed, you can also just use it for specific clients that you want to. So definitely something to learn more about later in your journey with Simple Practice. Yeah, that's one I always recommend, like maybe get used to doing it manually and then after a few weeks or a month or two, then go into auto pay, but it can be super useful. And that's a quick overview of the billing process. And like Kelly said, you can always find more resources on the Help Center. But for now, let's take a break, take a walk outside, and we'll see you in the next video for how to add progress notes and other types of documentation for your clients. All right, so don't stop now, you guys. I know that getting through billing, getting through setting up your simple practice isn't always the most fun thing, right? But building that foundation of your private practice isn't so, so important, especially before you see those first clients. And make sure to tune in for the next video, maybe go out and take a break, but then we're gonna talk about how to do documentation in simple practice. That's a really key part of setting this all up. So we're looking forward to seeing you in the next video.